Chapter 25, Seeing the Light Across the River Young Master, the woman in the white dress seems to be a cultivator. I can feel the presence of humans in the entire tavern, most of them are ordinary people, and there are no lack of martial artists like you. There are few cultivators in the key cultivation realm, but they exist. Tushin Kingless voice rang in Han Ye's ear. A cultivator? Han Ye thought to himself. If she is already a cultivator in the key cultivation realm, she shouldn't be headed to the Dragon Sparrow sect. Brother Han, what are you looking at? At the dining table, the food had already arrived. Wang Da Niu noticed Han Yi was still staring downstairs, so he asked curiously. His own gaze swept over the lower two floors, but he found nothing worth noting. Han Yi turned his head and smiled, nothing much, I just saw a pretty woman, quite a feast for the eyes. Oh, is that so? I still think Hong Liu is the prettiest. Let's eat, I'm starving. Wang Da Ni laughed and tore off a large chicken leg from the roasted chicken in front of him. He stuffed it into his mouth and chewed freely, his mouth dribbling with a deliciously aromatic oil. Eat, half an hour later. When everyone had eaten and drunk their fill, it was time to board the ship. But the weather had turned gray, as if a heavy rain was about to fall. The agreed-upon covered boat was docked at the harbor, large enough to accommodate a hundred people. After bringing the horses onto the ship, everyone began to board. On the Wuyuan River, night fell swiftly. The night was tranquil, with only the gentle waves lapping against the hull of the ship, making a soft thud. And the grating sound of the anchor chain was somewhat harsh to the ears. Han Yi leaned against the railing of the deck, no one was around. He smoothed his wind-tousled hair from his forehead, taking a deep sniff of the air. This slightly fishy and salty breeze, it somewhat resembled the feeling of being at sea. Water on all sides, there was hardly a difference being on the sea. The Wuyuan River would eventually flow into the Eastern Sea. But it had to be said that it was exceedingly long, requiring a day and night's journey to reach Qingyun State. Night had fallen, and Han Yi, with his keen eyes, could barely make out the outlines of the distant mountains. Unexpectedly, the rain had stopped. Suddenly, a billowing white mist rose from the surface of the river, extremely dense. Even the flames on the deck were suppressed to the extreme by this thick fog. The fog ghosts are obstructing the view, everyone should return to their cabins, no need to pay attention to them. The crew on the other side were gesturing, shouting these instructions. Their voices echoed over here. Fog hosts? Hanya stared into the dense fog in a daze. This was his first time hearing about such a thing. A trail of cyan smoke emerged from his sleeve, transforming into a small white fox standing on Han Ye's shoulder. It was Tushin Kingly in her true form. She bared her teeth at the white fog, her green, vertical pupils glowing like a pair of lanterns in the darkness. The surrounding white fog seemed to know better and slowly retreated. Seeing this, Han Yi was quite taken aback. He hadn't expected this little demon fox to have this kind of ability. The petite white fox transformed into a thousand strands of white energy, coalescing into the form of Tushin Kingly. Wearing a green gauze dress, she stood next to Han Yi and stared at the white fog, saying, Fog hosts are a very common type of ghost. They usually appear in heavy fog, hiding themselves in the mist and startling people by suddenly terrorizing them. This kind of spirit cannot bring about any major problems, usually robust Jianghu martial artists who are brave, are not afraid of it. Just need a bit of a strong spirit, and it could be shattered by the sound of a person's voice. After listening, Han Yi nodded his head. Just now he had heard the crew members' instructions to hide in the cabins until it passed. Didn't the Dragon Sparrow sect kill all the demons and spirits? How come there are still fog ghosts? Han Yi asked, puzzled. Tushin Kingly explained, fog ghosts come with the wind and leave with it. This group probably just arrived. Besides, they are the lowest level of ghost. Generally, no one is afraid of them because they pose no threat. The Dragon Sparrow sect probably can't be bothered to deal with them. Han Yi, what are you doing standing there? At that moment, Han Yi heard someone calling for him. In the thick fog, a figure emerged, forming Liu Linka's face. This Liu Linki, however, had an enchanting smile on her face. Her body seemed odd with twisted limbs, and her voice was strange. 
Come here quickly, I have something to look for you. Tushin Kingly crossed her arms and looked up to say, Young master, this is an illusion of a fog ghost, pay it no mind. I know. Han Ye's face was calm. He made a fist with his fingers, and a faint trail of white energy rose from his danchen. Bam! With a strike of his palm through the air, this Liu Linky was directly shattered into pieces, transformed into a puff of white smoke. The white smoke had a humanoid upper body, and the lower half resembled a flowing ghost phantasm, and swiftly dissipated. Hmm. <laughs> Han Yi snorted coldly, a clumsy performance. Miss Liu will not smile at me like that. He had it figured out now. These fog ghosts didn't seem to be capable of inflicting substantial harm on humans. They could only attempt to spiritually attack them at most. Only those with exceptionally weak willpower would have their souls devoured. However, being a martial artist himself, his vitality robust, these weak demon ghosts were less likely to harm him. But ordinary people had no means to withstand these fog ghosts and could only seek refuge. Such creatures were considered the dregs of the ghostly world. Regardless, this was a lesson learned for Han Yi. Ghosts and demons truly were intriguing beings. He wondered if H'd ever have a chance to study them further. Gradually, the wind quieted down, leaving only the faint howls of the ghosts and the wolves. However, they were far away from the area where Han Yi was. Han Yi, why are you still on deck? Didn't we ask you to return to your cabin? In the glow of the fire, Liu Linky, dressed in a green martial robe, stepped out from her cabin, her cold gaze fixed on Han Yi. Miss? Turning his head, Han Yi noticed that Tushin Kingly, who had been at his side, had disappeared without him realizing. Only the two of them remained on the deck. Hmm. Her gaze remained icy, and confusion shone through it. On this journey, your lives hold significant value to me too. Every lost life symbolizes a wasted spot for the Liu family. To manage the crowd on the deck, I found you still standing here. Aren't you afraid of death? Embarrassed, Han Yi laughed awkwardly and rubbed his head. Indeed, that was a possibility. My apologies, he'll head back to the cabin right away. Taking two steps at a time, Han Yi headed for the cabin. Just before entering, his gaze caught a familiar figure. At the tip of the ship's mast, a woman in white stood against the river wind and thick fog. A dually hat covering her face, she stood upright, one foot positioned at the very edge of the mast. One hand clasping a sword sheath, silently gazing off into the distance. She too isn't afraid of death. Why don't you go ahead and advise her as well, miss? Han Yi directed Liu Linka's attention to the figure with a gesture and a suggestion. Who? Lilinki followed Han Yes directing finger. True enough, there was an odd woman standing atop the mast. Who ish? Lilinki clearly didn't recognize her either. It truly was bizarre for someone to be standing above at such a time. Ooh. The eerie cries of wolves echoed around them, the fog rift on the river surface. The terror concealed beneath the fog couldn't be discerned, but their ranting and howling were clearly audible. The ship's progress slowed to a halt, the waves hit against the sides. It seemed apparent they had decided to wait for the fog ghosts to disperse. The woman's hair fluttered in the river wind, the elegant hem of her dress swaying and dancing in the air. Her brilliant eyes squinted as she murmured in an inaudibly tone, The rain has stopped, isn't it time to leave? If you intend on obstructing my path, then allow me to escort you out. The woman moved all of a sudden, she unsheathed the sword in her hands and swung it forward. Swoosh! The sound of her sword cutting through the air rang out. Then, the flowing river water came to a halt. Splash! A ripple of sword key, akin to a dragon in motion, split the thick fog in half. For a fleeting moment, the murmuring of the fog ghosts disappeared altogether. The shockwave carried by the sword key cut a path through the river waves. Where the sword had swung, nothing remained but river rocks and the riverbed. Upon witnessing this, Han Yi was left in a state of shock. What the hell? What on earth? What the heck is this? Is a key practitioner? No way, no one told him key cultivation looked like this. Who knew this woman could be so formidable? Suddenly, a thought flickered through Han Yi's mind. If this woman, too, had boarded the ship headed for Qingyun State, could she possibly also be headed toward the Dragon Sparrow Sect? 
If that were the case, it would be advantageous. Since that sword stroke, the fog had parted, revealing the moonlit sky. The fog ghosts dispersed quickly. The moon's illumination reflected off the river, casting a luminous glow, 